Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to get the document and bring Anna Kurkowska to safety. As always, should you or any member of your IM force be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. Good afternoon, boys and girls. Hey, it's Pastor Frank, and it's time for Ignite Kids. Yes, I know right now that we've got this uh, corona thing going around. You probably heard uh, heard it on TV, or, or maybe you've heard your folks talk about it, and, and everybody's saying it's probably better that we just stay in our homes, and, and that's fine, but just because we're staying in our homes doesn't mean that you and I can't get together. So we're gonna have church a diff, 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 different way, and we're gonna do it right here online. Are you ready to get started? Good afternoon! Let me hear ya! Oh, come on. Come on, you can do better than that. I need you to do it again. On the count of three, are you ready? One, two, three! Oh, oh, now that's better. That's how you're supposed to do it. Well, I am glad that you are here today. Hey, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna praise Jesus, and we're also gonna learn something that Jesus wants to teach us. Are you ready to get your praise on? I've got some songs. There are a couple of your favorite ones. So I need you right now to get up, stand up. That's right, stand up, stand up in the room. And hey, if your folks are there, get them to stand up too. Stand up, because they can join you in the praise that we're gonna do. Matter of fact, Boys and girls, why don't you show your parents how we do it in kids' church? Are you ready? Then here we go!
closer to you, but I feel like I'm so far away. Cause I love my fear, let my fear get in front of my face. Hey boys and girls, keep working on those songs and doing those hands movements because when we get together in kids church again, I bet you guys are going to be really good at those hand movements. You know what boys and girls, last week I talked about what are you smelling? So today I thought I would talk about what are you listening to? Have you ever tried to tune into a radio station? Maybe one of your favorite ones, and you would take the dial and you begin to dial it. Counseling, but he's coming up. Hey, remember the mortgage meltdown of but on Tustin Street in Orange? We're celebrating Toyota Fest. You Bye, say easy. Get a guy's I'm in love with you trying to find your radio station, you would hear all kinds of noise and interference as the needle moves. And you would be trying to find your favorite station. So then you even listen closer to try to hear your station over all the other noise that's around you. Finally, you hear a glimpse of your station. So then you really focus in and you begin to really listen as you dial in that knob to get it really right onto the station. It's a little bit fuzzy as you go back and forth, but you're like, there it is, I found it. And finally you zero in and boom, now you can hear your favorite station because the voice or the song is now coming through strong. <laughs> Well, at least 
least that's how we used to listen to a radio station back when I was a kid. What I just described is a good example about how you and I can learn to hear God's voice. It's kind of like tuning into a radio station. It takes some patience and focus. You have to listen very closely and have good focus on what it is you're listening for to get around all that other noise that you're hearing. You see, boys and girls, God's voice, though it is powerful and majestic and so strong, he speaks in a still, small voice. And so you and I have to listen very closely and we have to be very focused and we even have to be still sometimes in order for us to hear God's voice and it takes practice. You know, our last series, we've been talking about following the Good Shepherd, but today we're going to talk about how his sheep can hear his voice. Jesus said that that would be possible. So today we'll be talking about how we can hear God's voice, how we can listen to what the Spirit is saying. The Bible story that we're going to listen today is going to teach us how to hear God's voice through the example of God calling Samuel. Today's lesson is called Spirit Speak. Stories of the Bible. God Speaks to Samuel. This is Samuel. Hi! Samuel was the son of Hannah. Hey, Samuel! Hannah prayed for God to give her a son, and God did. So Hannah gave Samuel back to God. See you, Samuel! Bye, Mom! And Samuel grew up in the temple serving under Eli, the priest. Hi, Eli! As Samuel grew up, he learned how to serve God from Eli. Samuel lived in the house of God, but he did not know God or what God's voice sounded like. In those days, messages from God were rare. But one night after Eli had gone to bed, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle when suddenly God called out, Samuel! Huh? Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, Did you call me? Uh, me? Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. Then God called out again, Samuel. Huh? And again, Samuel got up and ran to Eli asking, Did you call me? Not me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. God called Samuel for a third time, Samuel. And Samuel went to Eli yet again. Hmm. After three times, Eli realized that God was trying to speak to Samuel. So Eli taught Samuel to say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Okay. Samuel went back to bed, and God came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. God told him many things about what would happen to Israel. As Samuel grew up, God was with him, and everything God spoke through Samuel came true. Samuel was seen as a great prophet of God because he could hear the voice of God, and he listened when God spoke to him. Remember the three things that we pray for? The first thing that we want to pray for is that we want to invite Jesus into our presence. Yeah, that's right. We want to invite Jesus to be here, right in my very home. So we're going to ask him, come on in, Jesus. Number two, we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will teach us something. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher that God has given us. And he reminds us of the things that Jesus spoke and taught about. So we're going to ask him to teach us today something 
that we need to know. And number three, we're going to pray for other people. Because right now, there's people out there who need prayer because either they're afraid or they're feeling sick or they just need to know that someone cares. So let's pray together. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes and let's talk to Jesus together. Dear Jesus, again, we just thank you for today that we can come together and uh, worship you and praise you, draw near to your presence. God, we invite Jesus to come here into our presence to be with us today because we desire to be with you. Also, Lord, we simply ask that your Holy Spirit would teach us something. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear so that we might hear what you want to speak to us today. And finally, Lord, we pray for all those people that we may know right now that you bring to our minds that might be sick or in need or are hurting right now because of uh, this COVID uh, disease that's going around. We know that you are a strong tower, that we can hide in you, that you will are a shield to us and will protect us. So God, I pray that you would reach out and touch those people, heal them, protect them, and provide for them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. My first point is position to hear. Come on, say it with me. Position to hear. One more time. Position to hear. You know, in the Bible story today, we learned about a young boy by the name of Samuel. Did you know that Samuel was about your age? That's right. He was about, they say, either 11 or 12 years old, somewhere around there. What I find fascinating about the story of Samuel is how God spoke to a young boy. And what does that say? You know, God can speak to anyone. You're never too young to hear from God. You just have to follow the example that Samuel lays out in the Bible. So let's look at how did Samuel learn to hear about God. He was only 11 or 12, but God spoke his name and he can speak your name, and my name. The question is, are you listening? So let's look at what Samuel actually did. The first thing we're gonna have to look at is where do we find Samuel in this story? Well, it's pretty obvious that the writer of the story put Samuel right in the temple of God. And then the writer says, it's the temple where the Ark of the Covenant is. Why is that special? Because the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God in the Old Testament. So we can see, boys and girls, that Samuel was in the temple seeking after the presence of God. He wanted to be near where the presence of God would be. Is that something that you desire? Do you want to be near the presence of God like Samuel? I know I do. Samuel chose to be near the presence of God. Eli, you know, he went to bed in his room, but notice that Samuel went into the temple near where the ark is because he wanted to be near God. <sighs> but one night after Eli had gone to bed, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle. And so at a very young age, he had a desire to want to know God. How about you? You have a desire to want to know God too? Because you can come to church like Samuel going to the temple, but not going into God's presence, you can miss it completely. But if you have the desire like Samuel did to want to get to know God's presence, you're going to want to get near to his presence when you come to church. So I hope that's you, because I know that's me. When we sing songs and we praise him and worship him, I'm not doing that just to sing. I'm doing that because I want to be near God's 
presence. That's right. That's right. How about you? Don't you want to get near to God's presence? So we need to seek God's presence when we come to church in our daily life. Well, boys and girls, you can find God's presence in two ways, the Bible tells us. The one place that we can find God's presence is when believers gather together. Jesus says in the Bible where there are two or more, there he is in the midst of them. Did you catch that, boys and girls? Yeah, that's very important to catch because what Jesus is saying, that when believers come together, focus on him, he shows up and his presence will come down and be with us. So we're not just gathering together amongst ourselves. God wants to inhabit or be with us and present his presence. We call that a manifest. He wants to manifest his presence with us. In other words, we can sense and feel his presence here. It's real, kind of like when you're outside and the wind blows and you can feel the wind blow across your arm and across your uh, forehead. You know the presence of the wind is here. It's moving. Well, when you get into the presence of God and he fills the room that you and other believers are in, you can sense it in your spirit that God's presence is is here. That's what we do. That's what we desire. That's what we want. The second place that we can find God's presence is when we pray. The Bible encourages us to talk to God. And when we talk to God, it tells us that God hears our prayers and he speaks back to us. So we need to also listen to God. You see, boys and girls, God desires to have a personal relationship with you. That means he wants to get to know you. That's right. Yes, you personally. He doesn't want to know you because you're somebody's child or pastor's kid or anything like that. No, he wants to know you directly and get to spend time with you and learn about you and, and walk with you, a personal relationship with you. You know, there was a story in the Old Testament where God told Moses to go build a tent and he told him to go outside of the camp far over away, away from the camp. That's right. And so Moses went out and he pitched this tent and in that tent, he called it the tent of meeting. And the purpose of that tent, the Bible says that anyone who wanted to come into that tent could meet with God. In other words, they were going to get away from all the distraction and noise that the daily camp often provided and get into a place that was quiet and still where they could focus and just listen for God. Yeah, that's right. And when they would meet with God in that tent, God's presence would come down and fill that tent and he would be there with them. Well, you and I both need a place to pitch our tent. We need to find a place where we can be sitting alone, quiet, where we can read our Bible, where we can pray to him and just give God all of our attention. Yeah, that's right. He looks for us to create a quiet time for where we can simply pray and read his word. Are you doing that? If you're not doing that, you need to go pitch a tent somewhere and learn to do that, whether it's in your bed or at a chair, somewhere where you can be comfortable and quiet and still and get away from all that noise of your daily life so you can just spend time with Jesus. You know, boys and girls, Jesus often prayed alone too. When you read your Bible, you'll see that Jesus would withdraw and he would go and find a quiet place where he could talk to his father and his father could talk to him. 
So you and I need to do that. We need to develop a time of giving thanks and giving praise and, and singing to God and worshiping Him and learning to talk to Him and learning to listen back from Him and reading your Bible and doing those kinds of things will help us develop our relationship with Jesus. That leads me to my second point. Where is your focus? Say it with me. Where is your focus? Come on, do the hand movements too. Where is your focus? You know, the Bible says that Samuel believed God, but he didn't know God. Samuel lived in the house of God, but he did not know God or what God's voice sounded like. He believed in God, but he didn't have a personal relationship with God. But that was all about to change in this story. He was doing the right things to get to know God, but it took a little bit of something from God to help him know him. You see, boys and girls, Samuel is missing one thing. He needed God to speak to him. The Bible said that the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. To reveal something means to like open up your eyes or like a gift inside a box and you take off the top of the box to reveal what's inside. The gift that someone had put inside, you get to finally see it and experience it. So he understood or knew about God, but God hadn't revealed himself to Samuel yet. But all that was about to change because God was going to speak to Samuel and cause Samuel's heart to come alive, cause his spirit to be awakened and aware of God's presence. And what Samuel needed was a revelation from God. Now I need to explain something to you boys and girls. You may have heard me say this before, but it's worth repeating. You know, the New Testament is written in the Greek language. And the writer, when he would use the word word, W-O-R-D, word, there were two words in the Greek that he would use. The first word that he used was called logos, the logos word. So in the Greek, when he would write the word was written on the page, he would say the Logos was written on the page. And that's what it means. It means the written word. It means that you write down what's being said. You know, when I'm in church, I'll take notes on what pastor may be preaching on. So I'll write down the words that he's speaking. And the words that I write on the paper is what would be considered the Logos word. The second word used in the Greek for word is called rhema. That's right, the rhema word. And rhema has a different definition. The rhema word means the now word of God, or the prophetic word of God, or the revelation of the word of God. In other words, it's alive and it speaks to you and to me. Let me use that example again of pastor preaching. Remember what I said a moment ago? I said that when I heard him speaking, I wrote down the words on paper. That was the written word or the logos word, what I wrote down. But what I heard pastors say, his voice speaking, and I could actually hear it in my ears, that would be considered the rhema word because I'm hearing it right now. And I'm understanding what he's saying right now. When suddenly God called out, Samuel. Huh? So when God speaks to us, he speaks to us with the rhema word, the revelation, the, the now word, the prophetic 
prophetic word. And that word is spoken into our hearts and into our spirit. And we can sense it and, 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 and kind of feel it. It's hard to describe it because it's not something we're used to. But the more you read his written word, the more you'll begin to understand his rhema word. Did you catch that? You see, boys and girls, Samuel knew the written word of God. He was familiar with the logos, but what he needed was the rhema word of God to move his belief into a personal relationship with God. And that is what exactly was going to happen in our story that we saw. God was going to speak a rhema word to Samuel, which would bring him to life and begin to develop a relationship with him. Samuel. Huh? And we get to see how Samuel begins his relationship with God and it develops into something beautiful. Do you want to develop your relationship with God? Do you want to do exactly like Samuel did? Then learn from his example. So the first thing that we saw that Samuel did, he heard the rhema word. He heard God call his name. But instead of responding to God, what did he do? Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, Did you call me? Uh, me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. You see, boys and girls, he did that three times. And that's because he didn't understand the rhema word. He knew the written word, but he never experienced the rhema word before. That was new for him. So he didn't know that God could speak to him. And all of a sudden, God is starting to stir his heart, speak to his spirit. It's something he's never experienced before. And he actually thought it was Eli talking to him. The good thing was is that Eli was older and wiser and he understood that not only God would speak to you through his written word, but he'll speak to you through his spoken word. And therefore, he instructed Samuel to go back to where he was and keep on seeking God's presence so that he can then respond to God's presence when he speaks to him. After three times, Eli realized that God was trying to speak to Samuel. So Eli taught Samuel to say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Okay. Samuel had the wrong focus. That's right. His eyes were on the natural instead of the supernatural. He was focusing on Eli instead of focusing on God. God. And thank God for Eli because he turned Samuel around and told him to go back and spend time with God. Don't come running to other people. Instead, run to God. You see, Jesus wants to have that relationship with you, but you need to learn to focus your attention on him so that you can hear his voice. You see, boys and girls, God wants us to keep our focus on him and not on other noises. It's easy to be distracted. The world is so noisy. And sometimes I think maybe even the devil tries to keep things busy to get us so that we don't focus on God. So we need to make sure we take time to pitch our tent, to find a place where we can be quiet and then focus on God. So when you pray, you need to spend time focusing on him. We need to come into his presence with faith, believing that he's there, whether we feel him, whether we sense him, whether we hear him or not. Samuel went to where God's presence was and he didn't sense him or feel him, but he did it anyways. But because he was faithful to keep going back, it was on the fourth time that God finally spoke to him that he realized it was God. So boys and girls, you need to keep praying, keep talking, keep seeking, and in time God will speak to you. He will show you things and it will be exciting. But that's not why we do it. 
We do it because we want that relationship with him. So make sure that every day you're spending time with him, taking at least a few minutes uh, where you say, you know what? Like I get up to get dressed, I gotta have time for that. I gotta have time to eat breakfast. Then I also gotta have time to meet with Jesus. So you need to put that in your time. Maybe you need to set your alarm uh, 15 minutes early so that you can get up and spend time with him. Or maybe you go to bed 15 minutes early so you have time to read your Bible and pray. I, I don't know what works best for you, but the point is, boys and girls, you should make time to spend with Jesus. Don't look to your parent to do it. Don't look to me, your pastor, to do it. God's looking for you to do it. Seek God yourself. He wants to talk to you. Where is your focus? Samuel learned to pray and spend time with Jesus at an early age, and he grew and developed in his relationship with Jesus to where Jesus used him as a great leader when he was an adult. Are you willing to do that? Will you start now? Will you establish a time of prayer, of Bible reading, of praise and worship, where you just spend time thanking God and praising him and sharing your heart with him and loving him? It's private, it's just you and him. That's it, that's all God wants, is your time and your attention. Will you give that to him? Will you start making that uh, an important thing? Will you be putting him first? Whether you get up early and do and have time with God or do it before you go to bed. Some people do it better at night. Some do it better in the morning. I like the morning. I like getting up early and opening my Bible and reading my Bible because I'm more quiet then so that I can learn to listen as I read his word, that I can pray and try to have time with Jesus and sense his presence. Will you do that? If you haven't started that, I encourage you to do that now because you want to be used by God and get to know God and God will bless you as you begin to seek him just like he did with Samuel. Well, boys and girls, I'm so glad that you were able to be with us today. I hope this word encouraged you and motivated you to want to change some things in your life, that you wanted to hear the Spirit speak. That's right. And that you wanted to be just like Samuel. I think he's a great example for boys and girls. And I hope you take that example and do exactly what he did and develop that. I'd love to hear what God does in your life. So share those things with me that what's going on in your prayer time or what, that you've set one up or, or you're pitching your tent right here. Awesome. All right. Well, guys, we love you. We miss you. Pastor and Amy can't wait to see you. Guess what? Next week, we're actually going to see some of you because we're coming back live. That's right. Next Sunday, we'll be back at Kids Church. The doors are open. And if your parents are willing to come, we'll make sure that things are safe for you. Social distance applies. But we're going to have Kids Church in Kids Church again. And I hope you're able to be with us. If not, I'm going to try to put this online or the service online so you can see it as well until your parents are comfortable coming back. Well, we can't wait to see you. We love you. You take care. Bye-bye.